Let's start the meeting. Um, first, for your approval, we have the minutes of the August 15th meeting. Motion approval. Second. Any uh, comment about the minutes? I think that's been established in the email. Ah. Mr. Okay. Parsons has made his comments privately. All right, privately. All right great. <laughs> And so are you. Well, so, all in favor of accepting the minutes as amended? Uh, aye. 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 Um, I'd like a motion to take number five, you know, business out of order. We have a couple of people here who would like to talk to us about hanging a banner on Trinity Row. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, is this meeting being recorded? I, it, well, by hand. <laughs> She's Unfortunately. doing it by hand. Very nice. The... Uh, North Street Association? Neighborhood Association. Neighborhood Association and Mimi Audres are recording this meeting. Yes? Hello, Hello everybody. Um, my name is Robin, and this is Griffin, and we are part of Collective Music Group here in Northampton. We are looking to put up a banner at Trinity Row Park for our Harvest Festival happening October 7th. Um, that's on a Sunday, and it's to help benefit the Northampton Survival Center. And we're looking to get as much, you know, promotions as we can for it, so we're looking to hang up a banner in a spot where a lot of people will see it, <laughs> and that way we can draw in a great crowd. So, that's about it. And we have the banner with us, too, if you guys wanted to see it at all. We, uh, we had a picture of it, I think. We did? Yeah. No. no. Oh, oh. That was our tonight. Now I get it. Okay, okay. just a letter. So, my first question is, how do you plan to hang this banner? Uh, it's grommeted, and it's probably just some zip ties, and just cut it down. And then... So, you're going to put it on posts? Yeah. Wooden posts, metal posts? Most, most likely wooden. Yeah, okay. the ones that are there at that park. I'm not too, too familiar with the park. Or how the Just so we don't want to hang from tree branches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it'd be like from some kind of post. Then you stake it with some guy some wires to keep it. Yeah, so yeah it to keep it nice. It's got some flat holes and stuff, yeah, so it'd be secured. And Maybe. would it be the day of the event or beyond that? Before that? Before that, preferably. I mean, as soon as yeah. possible, just because yeah. it's coming up rather weeks. quickly. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, two yeah. weeks. Yeah. At the most, yeah. Yeah, and we take it down like the day after, like Monday, the following Monday, October 8th. Make a motion we approve the placement of the banner. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. <coughs> so it'll be up for three days? Um, we'll probably try to put it up, yeah, and it'll be like a week and a half or so. Nobody's <laughs> reading. <laughs> 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 I know, no, I'm, I'm chewing, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, we didn't bring apples for every day. Uh -oh. <laughs> so all in favor of approving this banner. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. All right, so you're all set. Thanks. Good luck with your festival. Thank, Thank you. you. We have yes. NRBQ playing. Oh, oh wow. really? Who remembers yeah. them at the Rusty Nail in Sunderland? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have to come with like memories. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a $7 dollars <laughs> <laughs> See, James there you Brown. go. It's the Rusty Nail, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just now. Yeah. The <laughs> so they are headlining for us. So oh, nice. All Not making an appearance. Cool. cool. Indeed. And if you get just got a ticket, you can bring non perishable Yeah, for the North Indian Survival Center. Great. Well, yeah. thanks so good a lot. Stuff. Thank good you. Stuff. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Take care. And this other woman is apparently here from the UMass Political Science yeah. Department. I'm just observing. Watching democracy in action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, under new business, we have an arts night out request. I've already warned her. Oh, <laughs> so this is a this is a continuation of our previous meeting. Um, you asked that I do some research on it in North Adams and in Turner's Falls. All right, you see the Ross walks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I did hear back from Tom Bergeron in Turner's Falls or Montague, and that's included in your package. It was left out for you tonight. I have not heard a response from North Adams yet. So basically their project in Montague, Turner's Falls, went off without a hitch. They, people have really enjoyed it. There was a preview by the Director of Public Works, or in this case probably the Board of Public Works would take a look at that to see if it's fitting for the downtown area before installation if you choose to let the project move forward. And he mentions that uh, when they did the crosswalk, he asked them for a drawing so he could look at them and help decide what 
he felt would fit. This is the uh, superintendent of the DPW. Yeah, we'll, we'll fit up there. They have two longitudinal lines that run completely across the road, right. so they have mm -hmm. eight feet of mm -hmm. canvas pavement mm -hmm. to paint versus ours. Ours are two foot on, two foot off, so it's going to be interesting what they propose to do within our crosswalk. I think there's some discussion about seeing a sample. Is that if we decided to... Well, um, if they could provide what they provided the superintendent in... Uh, Whatever it was, North Adams? Or Montague? Montague. Montague. I think that would suffice in my mind. Because I, I am curious about, <clears throat> I like the graphics that I saw from the other projects, but <laughs> those crosswalks are nothing like ours. That's correct. So I would, my only concern would be that you, didn't, you wouldn't lose the safety aspect of the crosswalk to have the contrasting colors with the broad white stripes. And then whatever's in between, to me, it could be any color as long as it's not white. You know, the darker the better. And then you have it, and then I think it would be fabulous. I just want to see their ideas, and I'd be more concerned about losing the contrast. I, that's really my only concern. Um, otherwise, I support it. Boy, I think it would be really. I fun support to what do. Gary has to say. I'm also wondering if we could just, I, and maybe this is part of it, that we do it with a couple actual examples. I mean, not not a photograph, an actual that they start small, that they do it, you know. Well, I, I think I suggested that last, yeah. last meeting yeah, that they do a, a, a full-scale mock-up, but only on, you know, between <coughs> two bars yeah. at one particular intersection. Yeah. So we can kind of judge that way. Chris? Would it, would it help you if we specified um, that there be a border where they don't work, that we reduce the, 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 the size of the canvas so that the contrast between the white and the non-white is still there with like a three-inch, you know, I, I think that the contrast could potentially be greater, depending upon their color scheme and yeah, their patterns. Right. Okay. I think it actually, so having a border in between, I, okay. they would lose the no, I think Chris is saying, how about if there was like a, a one foot section on either end of our bars that was just pavement? You're right, you're saying. No, I was talking about in between, but I agree with what Gary is saying about the potential. Yeah, because we're not really talking about black and white. We're talking about some shade both, of both gray yeah, and yeah, white. And, white yeah. and so, you know, if they use blues and purples and dark greens, it could be, the contrast could actually be increased. So. I've seen the one in Turner Falls. They're great. I mean, they're, they're very interesting. They'd really, it's a nice little downtown anyway, but they'd yeah. be done in Turner Falls, and it would yeah. add some interest. Well, I guess we could all just go up to Turner's Falls. So are you, are you feeling, um, are you in the mood for a motion? I'd, I'd like to move that we uh, approve this with uh, either or a, a, a mock-up or just a sketch of what they want to do. Okay. And are they trying to do this before Arts Night Out? I don't know. Am I confusing two different things? And can the staff evaluate the drawing? And I think that would make the most sense in terms of public safety and the purpose of the crosswalk is so it's obvious where people are supposed to cross. They didn't have a time frame they were looking to have this done. It was just a request. My All right, so we have a motion that uh, they do a mo present a mock-up to the staff, and the staff makes the final decision. Second. Second. Well, good. All in favor of that motion? All right. Aye. That's great. Uh, contract for winter sand to Bill Willard in the amount of not no, yeah in the amount of thirty six thousand dollars. Second. This is our annual bid for a winter sand delivered or uh, pick up at the plant. It's the same pricing as last year, which was good to hear. We had two bidders. We had built the sand and gravel out of Sunderland, and we had the Willard, obviously. Um, the sand delivered was a, almost a dollar more uh, for Delta and was uh, 20 cents cheaper for FOB. But when you take the calculated miles of going to pick it up and bring it back, it made it much higher again. So uh, Willard's been our contractor for a number of years based on low bids. You think it's only going to be 25000 We made it thirty-six for the delivered price. 
just in case he needs to have some delivered, but generally we only get the FOB. And it, if it's FOB, it'll be 25. He just wants the option. Right, one of our concerns is we're down 110 wheeler at this point, so we don't have the carrying capacity that we used to have in the DPW. All right. All in favor of approving the contract? Aye. 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 All right, so next uh, we'd like to discuss approving additional language to the contract for cross-connection control software to Tokay Software. This is a contract. Okay, oh. mm -hmm. So this was a contract that you approved recently, and there's some language that Tokay needed to have in the contract language. Joe Cook has agreed to the language. So basically it's a contract that you re-signed by the board that incorporates the new language, and that language is part of your package. Basically, it's an indemnification if we're using the software wrong that we won't sue Tokay. Make motion that we approve the contract. Second. 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 Any questions about it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, we have a request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park on Saturday, October 13th from noon until 5 p.m. to raise, raise awareness of and Support prevention of domestic violence. Second. So uh, this is a, a basically an annual event they have. We have police concurrence, we have certificate of insurance, we have academy concurrence, and we have all the fees paid for. Do we have a motion? Okay. Second. What's the okay. question? Any other questions? All in favor of approving the request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park? Aye. 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 Great. Five are done. Six. Set claims for, set a meeting date for a claims meeting. At your next Board of Public Works meeting, scheduled for October 10th, we have the uh, Hillcrest uh, Drive public hearing. Okay. Prior to the meeting. So we should go further. Unless you want to have a short interim meeting between that and the 20. Can, can this wait for one? They just yeah. came in. They're not old claims. Okay. Like the 24th? 24th. It's just one? Two. There's oh, two, two there. Oh. Washington and Hill. So what? five and 515? Oh. What are these? Basically, for example, some people just left yeah. when you're outside. Uh, they got a really high water bill, and uh, they were mystified and actually kind of miffed about it. And so she was contesting why she should have to pay it. Gotcha. The previous person, uh, sewage backed up into the slop sink yeah, in the basement. Yeah, I remember that one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So things like that in general. It's interesting because these are these are within a hundred yards of each other. They're both right in my neighborhood, so it's an interesting coincidence. Hmm. How's your sewer doing? Uh, we <laughs> seem to be okay. <laughs> well, you're on the board. Keep <laughs> around. Uh, all right. So uh, that's all set. Uh, next, to uh, uh, discuss a recommendation to City Council for the street discon discontinuance of a portion of Village Hill Road. Move approval. We met out there um, a few weeks ago about it, and I, I neglected to bring it to the board meeting, the next board <laughs> meeting. So I forgot about it, and I got an email from Mary Madura, the council clerk, as to where the recommendation was. So here it is on the agenda. Was there a motion made? A second? Any further questions? All in favor of recommending that the City Council discontinue that portion of the road? Aye. Uh, old business, private ways. It continues to be a small struggle. Um, a little subcommittee, maybe this occurred before our last meeting. Not even a subcommittee, a small group of people drove around with Ned two weeks ago, and we looked at a few roads that the staff had identified as being very unlikely candidates to ever become 
a city street. Um, there have been discussions with the city attorney, there's been discussions between the staff and me, uh, with Gary, with David. I feel like there should be a little bit of public process. You know, if, if we are going to discontinue plowing a particular street, I think at least we should go look at it so we're all on the same page as far as this is a street, yes, I've looked at it, you know what, I agree also, we shouldn't be plowing this. Um, we're going to discontinue all municipal services on the street, and we're not going to recommend that the city council consider accepting this road as a city street. Um, I, I think making that kind of a statement about any street, we should at least go and take a look. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. Sorry, you're, 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 All right. Well, so, so, so it's a little bit different than if the residents of a street petition the city to accept their street. We're actually, I'm actually suggesting that we go out on our own initiative uh, to make a preliminary assessment of whether we think a street uh, will make the cut. Um, we've identified a half a dozen that are, would be likely candidates to take a look at and to evaluate so that we can tell these people if, in, if, if in fact the board decides, yeah, I, I don't think this would be a suitable city street under any circumstances, then I feel like we need to do that so we can then tell the people who live on the street that they'll have to make arrangements for snow plowing. Yes? Can we do it independently, not as a group? Meaning well, we could, and, and, and there are those arguing. And then discuss it. Yeah, there I are mean, people that... arguing for that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't have quite the formal process of standing there in a group and inviting the residents to come and talk to oh, us. Oh, oh, because it wouldn't include the residents. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I withdraw my question. And, and that was my question when I raised my hand. Would we, would be, would we be holding a public hearing? And, and that's kind send of, them an invitation. That's my thought. Okay. I, mean, I, no, I think that is. What does everyone think? Is that? I think the public should definitely be involved. I mean, who, whoever's on yeah. those streets. The residents. The residents. Or, or everybody. Well, if well, you're the total public. Mm -hmm. So when you. Well, it'd be posted, I think, it's a meeting. So I yeah, suppose no. if, uh, if you saw right. a posting and you lived across town, you could come. Sure. But you would send, you would directly invite the. Residents on the street by to, certified letter. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, think that would be I think we just yeah. do posting and think they're going to notice it. Right. Show up. I don't think that would be right. 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 Yes, ma'am. I I think we do need to meet with the folks. I I'm questioning whether it falls under the category of a public hearing, which has a certain level of formality to it. You know, we're obligated to hold public hearings for certain purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm just worrying about semantics here or not, but this is a this is this is a board meeting at the site is really what it will be. Right, I yeah, I think that's appropriate, an appropriate level of meeting. Yeah. <coughs> and, and as such, from what I remember from uh, uh, Councillor Seawall, that's a public hearing. Um, well, it's a public, public meeting. meeting. Public meeting. It needs to be yeah. posted. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Reason I bring that this it's also it circles back to the previous item about the claims committee. Um, it sounds like everyone's more or less in agreement that this this would be a, a worthwhile way to approach this. Um, what would you think about you know like putting aside an hour outside of our regular meeting schedule and see if we like hold three of these? and maybe schedule a couple of those over the next six weeks. I mean, that's a proposal. I'm mm -hmm. Six weeks is mid-November, almost. Which Four is weeks. Snow season. Mm -hmm. So, so we might be sooner, sooner right. than later. Or might we think about doing it maybe on a Saturday morning and just knocking them all out? That's fine with me. How many is all? <laughs> I, I, I think we're just going to start with like half a dozen. Or eight. I think there's more like eight on the list. 
Well, there's definitely six on the list. I yeah. know that. There's no prohibition against having a board meeting on a Saturday, is there? No, I don't think so. I was just supposed to. Okay. Fifteen. Tw I guess we could schedule one every twenty minutes. We'll look at where the locations are and do some coordination. Is your do you think ten minutes is the appropriate time at each site? Five minutes? Sounds Fifteen minutes? Like too little. Well, I was gonna say I think it's appropriate for us. It may not be appropriate for the people <laughs> who live there. Yeah. <laughs> um, well we might have to continue a particular meeting hearing if if there was a lot of turmoil or a ser serious objection. I, I, I think maybe in determining this, it might be useful to know exactly what it is we expect to be the outcome at the end of it. Will, will, is this, will there be a decision made based on that, or is this really a preliminary? The way we typically do these road uh, acceptance, discontinuance type things, is we have a hearing or a meeting on site, talk to the neighbors, and then at a subsequent Board of Public Works meeting, we, we make the vote. Okay, and that would also be announced, and they'd be aware of the timing of that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. If, if Nick doesn't right. forget, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't forget. Um. All right, so this seems like a good idea. I think so. Okay. Um, and looking at the next few Saturdays, is there? A, we could do this with emails, or we could just talk about it right now. I won't be here on Columbus. Yeah, that would be a bad. Yeah. Bad. So bad. Yeah. Okay. So is that the sixth? That's, That's the sixth. Yeah, it's a week so from this. It's a week from this. Thirteenth. Yeah, we'll do it on the thirteenth. I think that works for me. Wide open for me. Works for me. So that might be. Sounds good. But uh, like a two-hour <laughs> commitment. A two-hour commitment, like Maybe nine to eleven. Something like that. Say three. Yeah. I was going to yes. say yeah, it's going to be longer than that. Yeah. All right. Oh, it would have to fit into Ned's list schedule. What do you mm -hmm. think, Ned? Is yeah, this that would determine the length of it. I think three hours would be appropriate to do yeah. 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 Travel time, even though worst case, is maybe ten minutes. Maybe. Most of them are going to be five minutes. So, like, every half hour? Is that what you're thinking? That's kind of what I'm thinking. I either. think yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. If I'm, I'm wondering if if there are um, additional um, streets that fall into the same category, and whether we intend to get to those this year, or or are we going to treat everybody equally, sort of in this subset of streets, is really where I'm. What I'm the, this sub, the subset that <coughs> I anticipate that um, will. These are going to be fairly easy to agree upon. Mm -hmm. um, these don't look like a street. They look mm -hmm. like a driveway. Um, and then there's some that are slam dunks. Yeah, we should exactly. accept them. Yeah. yeah, like this is this is a no-brainer. We should accept this as a city street. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch in the middle that are messy. Mm -hmm. But um, essentially, I think it's. Imp I, I, I believe it would be a good idea for us to start chewing away at both ends. Mm -hmm. Um, Ned is going to talk to the city council at mm -hmm. the next meeting. I believe it's scheduled for the next meeting. I haven't heard from the mayor's office yet. About appropriating some money that we can use to pay surveying and legal costs to begin tackling those messy intermediate streets that might need a survey, might need title searches, might need who knows what. Um, with my Ned gave us a list, two lists about a month ago. One, one is a list of streets that we maintain that I think fall into this category that probably don't make any sense to maintain. Mm -hmm. And then the, another list of private ways that we don't touch that we just need to know about. Right. Right. So we're talking about the, the first of those two lists. And I think we ought to do all of them. If it's eight, then we ought to do eight. I, I, I don't think we ought to be plowing two streets this winter even just because they happened to, because we couldn't, right. you know, we couldn't get hours to into a Saturday, yes. seven, yeah, that's three right. that we've already right. scheduled. Yeah. So that's all. I'm open to going to four. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. 
So you'll um, you'll help us out with that. Sure. I forget whether what did we see the other day? Six streets, eight streets. I thought we saw eight. I thought we saw and, a and total of eight because we have to be going past one that was right next to one that we were looking at as one that probably would make acceptance at some point. Mm -hmm. We just have to go well, right here. Might as well take a look at this one. So we did look at more than the. The six that were on that original list. Did we spend more than two hours doing that? I don't think so. No. No. I know. No, we're no, about an the hour power. and 15 minutes, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but also remember, we're inviting the Right. Others. Correct. Well, well that's what I'm saying. But, but we went to eight. So when you look at travel time, and we did, I sent, I think we spent more time sitting in the yeah. car talking about what we were looking at than mm -hmm. we did yeah. so driving. So in the private way index, you also have these streets that Michael mentioned that. We have them in our index or our file as private way, yet we currently do nothing with them anyways. We, no maintenance, no plowing, anything. And with those, we could just write up a, a confirmation letter that we intend to keep going forward doing nothing on those and get those 15 off the list. And then these next six to eight are the ones that are, well, it looks like a driveway. Yeah, but we've been going to have I, plowing them. Right. Yeah, I would like to see that we would. And, the, and there's I mean, one that we plow that's not even listed as a private way, but we do a driveway. Mm -hmm. So that one we can just drop off because it's not even a question of it being a private way. All right, so you'll s set this up for the 13th. Yep. So we need letters to go out to the residents or the property owners on these streets. The abutters to the street yep. for the private way. And what I was going to ask is, so do we need to have a quorum of the board at these meetings? I don't think so. We're not voting. Okay. All right. We, we may, but, you know. No, I know, but I'm just like, if something comes up, or, mm -hmm. or we only get the symbol of our... And Mimi, you had a question. I'm just curious about how this works for open meeting stuff. I mean, you're not going to be able to say specifically where you're going to be in case you get held up somewhere. I, I'm just, after having the Attorney Seawald's uh, presentation at the last meeting, it just seems a little... As a member of the public, you know. Well, we'll have we'll have a posted meeting at the on top of the hour, bottom of the hour, top of the hour, bottom of the hour, at a spot. So having just a, a thing, so having something where you would be doing something where, in a room where you would have just like video or pictures of the streets, is not as acceptable as having to actually physically go out and you know making it so that it's an, a, in a in one standard place for people to go to. Well, historically, we've always, you know, since time immemorial. There's still a group of people who stand in front of a tree. If we're going to take a tree down, I mean, that's we go to the place, we take a look, we hear from the neighbors. And when you go to this street, are you going to have a list of like parameters or what you like? W how when you determine this is yes or probably way or not, have you as a board determined these are the guidelines or these are the these are the attributes of what makes it a street or what doesn't? Sort of like we a scorecard. We have a set of guidelines. Yeah. But there, there's no uh, black and white. Check, check, check. Yep, you're a street. Check, no, you miss a check. You're not a street. No, well, these are listed as private way. Yes. So they're already listed but, as but private way. In terms of whether they qualify to become a, a um, accepted, formally accepted city street, there are no rigid guidelines as to what process would be required. Okay. They have to petition the city council first. Yeah. To start. It's like pornography. No, it's no not. <laughs> no, but you know when you see it. Right? <laughs> um, but the point is, if we can get this big chunk out the way, of then yeah, then we'll know a little bit more where we are, and we'll have some precedent. All right, so you'll notify the abutters, yep. and we'll set this up, post the meeting, thirteenth. Yep. Excellent. Yep. That's all I have for private ways. Uh, stormwater and flood control. <clears throat> Tomorrow night, big presentation. Big meeting. Seven o'clock, JFK. I asked, I called last Friday to see if there was a meeting for this Thursday night. And they said no. I called here. And she said, no, there's no meeting posted. Not here. <clears throat> well, no, I know, but I mean, I called to see if there was a meeting. We just got a posting. It's the city council. City council yeah. is doing it, not us. So it's just on the city calendar and we got a notice on Monday was it? I was just making a schedule for the weekend so I called on Friday and she said there was no meeting. Yeah and we didn't have anything from them. We just got it. It's been a little um, loosey-goosey. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there have been, the, the agenda looked a little odd. 
The article in the paper today doesn't mention what day it is. It, it does, but it's not in the same paragraph of what time it is. I had oh. to look at it about yeah. four times. Yeah. To, yeah. Okay. I mean, I had to literally say, and the day, you know, I had to read everything. Okay, so <coughs> what time is it at? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Where is it? JFK Community Room. So Ned and I have been working on uh, our presentation. Um, Bill Dwight will do an overall introduction. I'll do a smaller introduction. Uh, Ned will make a presentation on the flood control system. Try, which our hope is to give people enough familiarity with the, the scale of the system, the scope of what we do for flood control, that people will be somewhat familiar with it. Uh, then he'll do the same thing with stormwater. Uh, they've got some great slides showing examples of where the stormwater system has been insufficient or has failed. Um, just a very brief mention of uh, stream erosion, which is a problem in a few places in the city. It's kind of a stepchild, doesn't fall into any neat category like our drainage system or the flood control. But it's, it's in this same bailiwick. Um, and then I will come back up, summarize uh, a couple of obvious questions are what if we don't do this or what if we don't do it now um, and I, I think we have an answer for that and then uh, we'll take the mandated expenses that are coming down from EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers and put that up on a spreadsheet so you can see what's the actual impact uh, as these things come, become due. Mm -hmm. uh, then the rest will be questions. And that's really our, our only goal. Um, lay out the problem, show how the problem um, becomes a, a spreadsheet. Um, at that point, we think the City Council will ask us to come back at a subsequent meeting with some ideas as far as uh, what we think might be a way to fund this stuff. We're not, there's no intention of going into that uh, on tomorrow night. I don't know how you're going to be able to avoid it because somebody's going to ask. Well, there are a lot of uh, really smart people here in town. A lot of people think very carefully about government and taxation, and and we're open to any ideas they may have. I think I think it's important we make that clear because uh, people people who don't even understand the issue have asked me about the $65. So. We're not going to lead with that tomorrow. No, then then they come up later. I, I know, I know. But, you know, so what was this thing about $65 or $66? <coughs> and I was like, yeah, that's the stormwater report. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. Ned's put a lot of work into it. Doug, the stormwater guy. Jim Laurel was on vacation. Yeah, how did you turn that out? Huh? I know, what's up with that? We have he's a cell phone. And, 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 the, and the map guy, Andy, is on vacation. Yeah. The two of them. And tomorrow is parents' night at the high school. Oh. Seven. So we'll get a lot of singles. And no transfers for parents. Mm -hmm. There'll be nobody there with children. Or at least high school. <coughs> All right. Any, any questions? Ned, do you want to add anything? Is it going to be on NCTV? I hope so. I don't know. Uh, Gene Spector and Gene Casey have set the whole thing up. Okay. They've uh, organized the details. Because <laughs> even I'm trying Did to remember. Gene, Gene, you said Gene Spector and Gene Casey. Oh, Paul Spector, Paul Spector. Gene Casey. When I looked at the city calendar, the city calendar, it wasn't even clear that that's what the forum was for. I don't think. Like I did look at the agenda, that's but. That's our thought. Also. Maybe it yeah. Will be. Yeah, that's what it says, yeah. Okay, next is a solid waste planning update. The dream team. <laughs> um, we have a, uh, a little group of a small group of people who are working and trying to think about whether or not there's a possibility of doing, setting up something as a reuse center. We've been uh, exploring the possibility of using some space at the Florence Community Center. 
that sort of has hit the rocks a bit because you might know the city is uh, at the finance committee is looking at the future of the Lawrence Community Center. So uh, the idea of putting a new use up there might be challenging. Uh, but we're meeting with the community tomorrow, and we'll move forward on that. I know that uh, it's been my intention to sort of launch it into the hands of the volunteers to get themselves organized and to come up with a proposal. So we will be moving forward on seeing what that proposal might look like yeah. tomorrow. At the same time, we have to be very clear that, that the Florence Community Center might not be a possibility given where the city is right now with that. And this would be like a, a re so like a take it or leave it type of a thing? Yeah, you know, we have the, the one day events that have been very successful. Yeah. We have a lot of community support. We have a lot of volunteers uh, who, who support it. Uh, the idea of, is if we had a consistent location and an ongoing operation, might we be able to do more with it? And I think we're looking to see if we can set something up, see if it's got real legs under it, and get it up and running doing where we are in terms of solid waste management for the city. Yeah. 1013 is the electronics one. Uh, you're right. The art and one. the arts yeah. one, too. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got a stack. <laughs> well, stack. you can still do it. You can go early a lot of times. Then we can make our first one at 9.30. That's cool. I'll figure it's, it out. Well, yeah. That's like a, a day-long thing, isn't it? No, it's nice usually 9 to 12. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, just just mm -hmm. crossed my mind, but it'd be so great if there was a space in the Smith School. Did you already investigate Smith. that and it didn't work out? Smith Bog. Smith, Smith Bog. Um, no, we haven't looked at that. That location has been great, the parking mm -hmm. lot. Is there any? Well, we did look into um, containers and doing it in a container and having the container being down at the bottom of the hill on the state land. And, um, but that, I mean, I think we should try to try to go with this and see where we can go with that. But okay. that's a good thing to follow up on. It's a good idea. I mean, for it, we could put the container there. The synergy of trash, take it or leave it, on either side of the street. Right, yeah. right, exactly. So, I mean, that could be a... Right. Really convenient. Second idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we continue to look for a spot. I think that okay. there's a lot of energy, and, you know, we were looking, hoping that the DOT site would come through. Clearly, that's not going to happen in my lifetime. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, I think that there's some energy behind it, and I think that this is the year we're going to do it. This is the year as we're having the, the conversation about the landfill closing down. Mm -hmm. This is the year that it's either going to do it or... I'm going to get the original thought of having stuff there in place when the landfill yeah. goes down. All right, that's great. Thanks. One other thing on that. The hauling disposal bids are scheduled to be open, what, next Wednesday? So you're aware of that. Great. Were we also going to reconvene the little group that was working on it earlier this year? We talked about reconvening that in the fall. Right. We talked fall. about that at the last meeting. Okay. We decided that we reconvene after the bids came in. And um, I suggested we just pick a date at the first meeting. Pick the date at the first October meeting. Okay. And then Jim will do me Jim for that. Great. Thank you. Is Thanks. the... Uh, Proposal for the adjacent state land de debt or being negotiated? The, the previous or mayor was of a mind to just charge ahead and get her done. Uh, I think David feels more cautious about it. Um, and it's his, his caution has allowed other people who feel cautious about liabilities around the landfill mm -hmm. to uh, kind of resurrect those concerns. So right now I think we're waiting to see if the state will take retake the liability for things like the landfill and just give us a price. That's the way it was left in a letter from the mayor. With no loose ends. <laughs> Basically is clean up the site and then we'll consider talking to you again about purchasing the property if yeah. you're selling. Yeah. Yeah. So basically our old proposals are completely off the table now. Um, so you, I think you all got the email about the overflow of the wastewater plant. Sure, I'll give you a quick update. The um, plant is operational. It's online. We do have some capacity issues with uh, peak flows. 
We had four Goodwin pumps in there capable of pumping 24 MGD million gallons per day down there as backup because we only have one influent pump working. Um, the complete uh, pump gallery underneath the, uh, underneath the main control building uh, had about three and a half feet of sewage in it. And with it, we lost every motor in there, so our waste activated sludge, our return activated sludge, our grip pumps, grip motors, Every one of these has been taken out. Some have been replaced with new. Some have been rebuilt and put back into service. Associated uh, Electric out of Springfield is doing that work for us on an emergency basis. They're also the company that dealt with us with the water treatment plant in a similar issue. Um, the control boards for the variable frequency drives for the influent pumps are down in Texas being repaired right now. They're overnighted. They should be back by the end of the week and running. And I met with our engineers, Kleinfelder, and RDK, who did the assessment of the mechanical and electrical of the wastewater underneath the uh, comprehensive wastewater management plan. Uh, I met with them about the transfer switching and the switching uh, uh, sequence and generator down there. So, as you saw in my email, basically the generator we believe went on but had a ground, ground fault. It was probably from the sewage of, over all the motors in the, the pump gallery that caused that. Because of it, it wouldn't transfer power. We found the ground fault light on, and then the auto dialer didn't work, which was even more problematic. So we have instituted a new SOV at the plant. At, before the people leave every day, they physically go through a routine with the auto dialer to make sure that it is operational before they leave the plant, and that will happen on a daily basis going forward. So uh, we've had a number of discussions with DEP. Uh, we had a conversation with EPA. And uh, my understanding is being referred to the Enforcement Division at DEP, and I should be hearing from them soon. So we are probably in the order of, I would probably say, $100,000 to $125,000 worth of damage that we've incurred so far. One of the good things, there's nothing good about the release, but none of the sludge left the clar clarifier, the primary clarifier. All the floatables stayed in the Headworks building so that if you go out there, you can't even see that anything even happened, but there's primary effluent that just went into the old mill river bed that went down to the Connecticut River. Got flushed through the rain event we had that night. The, uh, I think, I, I found it interesting. Uh, Central Services was upgrading some electronic systems around the city, and they hired a contractor who showed up at the plant uh, unannounced uh, you know, they explained that we're doing something for central services, and people at the plant said, okay. So they went in and um, made some changes on the auto dialer. Did not reconnect it properly. That's why the auto dialer failed. Do we know that definitively? We're investigating that. What happened was uh, they're doing a button they call it a microwave intrusion alarm. So instead of calling an alarm company, it's calling a public safety dispatch directly. And it's a project being done through all, all city buildings right now. This company was in the plant the week prior, and they were in the same Verizon box that we call it the bread box, where all the telephone wires come together. Um, and we hadn't had an alarm since that, and it was about four or five days prior they were in the building. Uh, when we called them the next day after this event happened, we had a uh, Jim Zimmerman followed them around. Uh, what they did was they put a tone to the wires at the auto dialer, and they chased it back, and they connected those two wires that weren't connected into the breadboard. So something happened back there with the collection of uh, all the phone lines coming in, and we believe it's associated with that. Are we going to pursue that? I believe we are. So our insurance carrier is getting involved in it, and our city solicitor is involved in it. Okay. Good. Now, I'm I'm sorry if your email said this and I didn't didn't get it. Did, did the rain event was the rain event the catalyst for this, or was that coincidental? Just coincidental. Okay. Something caused a failure of electricity. We had two. We actually had two poles go down in the city that afternoon evening. I know that. One was on Bradford Street, and the other one was on Fort Street. Um, there was a power outage. The plant stopped operating about 9 o'clock in the evening, and 
uh, didn't come around until about 6.50 in the morning when one of the plant operators showed up and noticed that it wasn't running, the clarifiers were overflowing onto the ground. So it ran about nine hours unattended. We believe, after looking at the calculations of the capacity of the clarifiers, the feedboard capacity, the amount in the control room, we believe that less than 500,000 gallons left the facility. How did the sewage get in the function? Is it it, through the headworks, through the uh, grit channels, and it backed up because then it couldn't pump out anything. And went down, went down some stairs or something. I mean, no, it actually came. It, the the pump room is at the lowest elevation of the control building. Okay, pump rooms that I'm familiar with are isolated from tanks and channels that that can overflow. So that's what I was wondering. Normally, I would have thought it would have gone on the ground, but not down into the pump chamber. It didn't go down. It came into it. It, did, it actually yeah. didn't come down staircases or anything of that nature. Okay. So, I happened, and we're trying to figure out the next steps, and we're also making sure that uh, it doesn't happen again, especially it's very critical that the auto dialer work and very concerned about the, the transfer controls, and basically we were told that these things are antiquated and should be replaced and updated, which is something we've been looking at through the Comprehensive Waste Management Plan, the, the upgrades that need to happen at this older facility. Okay. Is that, uh, is that all on that? That's all. Okay. Gary, is there anything? You have for us tonight? Do you want? Chris? I can, I'm pleased to report that sometime in the last 12 hours, the mineral winery sign was moved to the new location. Because I drove by it this morning, it was in the old spot, and I drove by it this evening. Nice. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's been relocated. So, thanks, man. And soon the new sign should be there? Uh, only one new sign is going in. Uh, the Amassas felt they could only afford one new sign mm -hmm. instead of two, so okay. we've ordered one new sign for them. It should be here in a week. Nothing new. Nothing. Um, we have an interesting project uh, commencing on Friday afternoon. We're meeting with the art teachers at the elementary schools, and they're doing a snow plow painting for us this winter. Uh, basically, we have six plows that we have prepped and ready for them to paint their own design on. And these schools, will, these plows will actually be used in the school neighborhoods that we plow also. So something that caught our eye, uh, actually caught Rich Parcelletti's eye a while ago and wanted to do something to work with the community and we thought this would be a fun project. Great. I hope they'll be using durable, high-grade automotive paints. <laughs> high VOC, not low VOC. I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I just would like to say, just a quick thing, uh, you may remember Rich Parcelletti and Ned sort of speculating about the collapsed floor next door in the sheds, that, you know, we could almost do that ourselves, and they're going to. Oh, I think that's nice. moving forward. Excellent. We, we can't deal with the mechanics bay because of the high mold up in that area, uh, but the floors itself, we put a proposal to the mayor that allows DPW staff to do the work, uh, build pride and ownership of the building, and get it done before winter. If we have to go through a Chapter 149 process, which the mechanic area definitely has to go through, this is a long project, and we need the garage storage space open for winter. So I'm going to the city council next Thursday night. We had $75,000 in capital improvements money for the salt shed as part of the purchase of the state yard next door. And that request would be to the city council to reprogram, reprogram that money towards the DPW barns and its repair. Do you feel that that's how far the, do you have any sense of how far the 75 grand would get you? It will, we have calculated $50,000 for us to do the immediate work in the storage area. Uh, the area in the mechanics is estimated to be about $125,000. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. 
That's all I got. Move to adjourn. So, Thanks for your time tonight. What? You didn't ask MJ. Yeah, they did. They passed. Oh, yeah. I even asked I asked BJ. Okay. MJ, did I get that right? Yeah, you did. Okay.